Section 3.6 is about modeling using exponential and log functions. When we model something, we're taking a real world situation and we're trying to come up with a mathematical equation that models the situation. It's generally not going to be a perfect match. If I have a mathematical equation that's trying to model the population of a town in a as a function of time, the model might predict that at a particular moment in time I have you know, a fractional number of people, which isn't really possible, okay? But it can give me something that's in the right ballpark, okay? Uh, one of the things, for those of you who go all the way to differential equations, there you actually see how we can take certain assumptions about how things are behaving and interacting to come up with the models. In this class, we're going to be given the models and just asked to use them. The first couple of questions we're going to look at, <clears throat> this is actually just called working with literal equations. Another way of phrasing that is we're just working with formulas. So we're going to be given some formulas, and I've just selected a couple that are given as even-numbered problems in the book. Uh, they don't even tell us exactly what it means. They do give us some sense. This is a formula that gets used in chemistry, and this is a formula that gets used in meteorology. But they're not giving us a full-on explanation of things. But what they're asking us to do is to solve the formula for a particular variable. Now, right now, this one is solved for n. So if I were plugging in n naught, generally, when you see that same variable with a subscript of 0, that means the initial value of n. So whatever n represents, that would probably be the value of n at time 0. Okay. And then if I were plugging in a value of t, I would be calculating what this is. Much as we've got our formulas for compound interest as solved for A, solved for the value of the investment. Now, that's great if what you're trying to do is figure out what the value is, and you're just plugging in different times. But if you're always trying to say, when is it going to be worth this much, you're really solving for time, and it might be easier to rearrange the formula to have it solved for time. That's essentially what they're asking us to do right here. And then here with this formula, again, we don't have a full explanation of it. We're just told it's used in meteorology. But they're saying right now it's solved for A, whatever that is. You might find yourself, if you were a meteorologist, finding it more helpful to be able to solve for P. So can we just rearrange the formula to solve for that? So we're basically using the skills that we developed in the last section where we were solving equations. But everything, almost everything, is going to be a letter instead of a number. So we're just doing the work. In some ways, it's easier because we don't have any arithmetic to do. We don't have numbers, so we don't have to actually do any arithmetic. In some ways, it's a little harder just because it's more abstract. All right, so let's try this first one. We're trying to solve for t. Okay, I'm going to just sort of circle the t. That's what I want to get by itself. So I can see that that's up there in that exponential, in that exponent position. So I know I want to isolate the exponential expression. So that n sub 0, that n naught, is not part of the exponential expression. So let's first of all just divide both sides by that. So I would have n divided by n naught is equal to e to the negative 0.025t. Now that I've isolated the exponential expression, I can just take the natural log of both sides. Now, if I do that, I'll have the natural log of n over n naught is equal to the natural log of e to the negative 0.025t. Since my base here is e, the log function with base e, the natural log, undoes that. I just get that exponent. So we'll have the natural log of n over n naught is equal to negative 0.025t. I want to know what t is. I multiply it by negative 0.025. So let's divide both sides. Whoops. Let's divide both sides by negative 0.025. So we would have t is the natural log of n over n naught all over negative 0.025. Excellent. And I would say that's probably the simplest form. If I wanted to, I could observe that because that's the natural log of a quotient, I could rewrite that if I wanted to as the natural log of n minus the natural log of n naught 
over negative 0.025. I don't know that that's necessarily any simpler, but either of those would be considered an acceptable answer. Okay, so let's try number 14 here. Okay, so I've got this equation. We want to try to solve for P. Now in this equation, P is part of the argument of log. So now I'm trying to isolate the log expression. There's only one log in the problem. So I'm going to try to get this log is equal to that number. It's just the number is going to be expressed in terms of all of these other variables. So let me just write this again at the top of the board here. Negative 1 over K, natural log. P over 14.7 is equal to A. So I want to isolate the log, so let's multiply both sides by a negative K. That way the negative K and the negative 1 over K will cancel, so we'll just have natural log of P over 14.7 is equal to negative A times K. Now that I've isolated the log, I can rewrite that in exponential form. So the exponent I need when e is my base to get this, p over 14.7, that exponent is this, negative a k. Now we were trying to solve for p. So if I want to get p by itself, it looks like I would want to multiply both sides by 14.7. So I would have 14.7 e to the negative a k is equal to p. So we're basically just doing the skills that we had in the last section. We're just working with an awful lot more letters. All right, I'm going to have you folks try one and then We'll go over it at the end of the next video. So the two I did were even-numbered problems. This is an odd-numbered problem, so it is an assigned problem in the homework. You're getting a jump start on the homework. This is one that shows up in chemistry, and it's the natural log of K over A is equal to negative E over r times t, and I thought I had written down what we were solving for. Let me check. We are solving for k, and they actually use a capital T in the textbook. Okay, so see if you can solve that for k, and we'll start with that at the beginning of the next video.